So in, in preparation for being here today, um, one of our coaches who said to me, so why do you do what you do? So the reason I do what I do is that when I was going through medical school, I realized that I was a fixer and I needed to fix things. So I became a general surgeon. And as I went into general surgery, more and more of my patients would say, you're not a typical surgeon. And I'd say, what do you mean by that? Well, you talk to, my, to us. You talk as if we're really important and you're not here just to operate. And so that's how I ended up in breast cancer surgery because my day starts usually with many worried women. And I'll give you a little story about how that goes. I walk into an exam room and there she is sometimes with a significant other and sometimes not. And she's sitting on the table and she's looking like a deer in the headlights. And she, most of the time at this point, knows that she has breast cancer. And the first thing I have to do is I have to walk up to her and hold her hands and say, this is curable. Because breast cancer is curable. And the thing about breast cancer is that breast cancer is not just one disease. It's at least four different diseases. And in about the year 2000, in Scientific American, there was a scientific article that said it may not just be four diseases, it may be 10 different varieties of disease. And so what I try to tell them, even though they're sitting there with a pile of papers from Dr. Google, is that we have to treat breast cancer individually. We have to understand what kind of breast cancer this particular patient has. So I'm going to take you through a journey, a journey that will look at what breast cancer has been and where we've come when it comes to surgery. Because over the course of time, especially since the late 1970s, we've added other treatment options to the surgical treatment of breast cancer. And those are not what we're going to talk about today. Those include hormonal treatment and chemotherapy. But I'm going to take you back and... Next slide for me. I guess we don't have another slide. Okay. I had a diagram. Next one. These are the faces of breast cancer. These are the patients who you all see on a daily basis in your Ladies' Home Journal and in the People magazine. These are young, these are old, these are the celebrities. They come in African American and Asian, they're men. I, I, I in preparation for this, was amazed that um, uh, Richard Roundtree actually had breast cancer in 1993. And Peter Chris of KISS had breast cancer. So this is what you have to remember. Next slide. Wouldn't it be great if we actually were able to take care of breast cancer uh, in a one-day kind of fashion? Where did we come from, though? Next. The picture on your left is a picture of a very ancient instrument that was how we used to remove, not that I ever did, I wasn't that old, but um, <laughs> remove the breast. The picture on your right is the modern uh, day giant in surgery, Dr. Halstead. And Dr. Halstead did what we learned to be one of the major reasons that we could cure breast cancer is the radical mastectomy. The radical mastectomy actually was everything that we could find on the chest wall. It cured more patients. But the problem is, when you cure more patients, we also, with that type of surgery, we did a lot more disfiguring procedures. So by the 1970s, we realized we didn't have to do radical procedures. So in the late 1970s, we just left the muscle in place and we took the breast. We would give the patient a very nice flat chest. And these slides are not my slides, that my latest version, so I'm going to apologize because I had some really good pictures for you. <laughs> so I know they're not going to be here. And so it's making me more nervous, so I'm just going to tell you this story. 
When we do the modified radical mastectomy, we leave the muscle and we take less lymph nodes. What happened was we realized that we didn't have to always take all those lymph nodes, and we could just take the lower two levels. We still did mastectomies, but what we found is that we could actually reconstruct the breast. And we could reconstruct the breast and make it look almost like you were born with. Well, over the last 10 years, we actually realized that we could take the breast, leave the nipple in place in the correct patient, and the patient would look almost like themselves. I wish I had my slides because I could show you a patient who gave me permission to show you what she looks like, and she has two breasts. One is fake and the other one is hers, and they look identical. But by the 1980s, we realized that what we could do is we could take a portion of the breast, and by taking a portion of the breast and a little rim of normal tissue, we can make that patient live just as long as the mastectomy patient. But we needed to do radiation. And in the 1980s, when we did this study, what we realized was that radiation had to be the whole breast, 10 minutes a day, five days a week for six and a half weeks. Well, let's fast forward now. About 15 to 18 years ago, what we also found is that maybe we can do less. Maybe more is less. And so what we did was we started to use partial breast radiation techniques where we actually insert a device into the breast after the fact. And the patient would go to the radiation facility. They'd have this device sticking out of their breast. Now, mind you, it was bandaged in between, so we didn't have to make them walk around with this device fluttering in the wind. Um, and so what they would do is hook up to this machine and just radiate the area around the breast tumor cavity. And when they did that, we were able to do it in a shorter time period, twice a day for five days, and the catheter only had to be in there for a week. It decreased the amount of radiation damage to the rest of the chest wall, but not everybody could have this, but a good portion of our patients could do this. So about 10 plus years ago, some very bright people said, why can't we do this in the operating room? Wouldn't this be wonderful to have it done all at the same time? So there are three different types of equipment that have been used to do this intraoperative radiation. Two of them use a low-voltage type of uh, equipment, and one uses electrons. All three are still being used today, but in September, the American Society of Radiation Oncologists actually published some guidelines that now makes it that it can be used outside of an experimental study, because up until this last month, everything that we did intraoperatively really was under an experimental study. Electrons. Electrons is the type of radiation that we are most comfortable with. It's what we're used to being able to manipulate to do treatment for all types of cancer, including breast cancer. And so what we now have at our disposal is the ability to tell a patient that we can do it all at the same time. Not everybody can have this. It has to be a patient with a small tumor, someone who doesn't have any cancer in their lymph nodes at the time, and it has to be something that we can actually do and feel comfortable about doing. So I had a patient, she came to me recently, and she walked, and I told you about Dr. Google. Well, they also come in not even knowing what kind of cancers they have. And she said to me, before you even start, I will only have an incision this big. I am not doing chemo. I won't take that hormone blocking pill and I want it all done at one time. Okay, so the good news is she fit all the criteria, but there was one thing I had to tell her. The machine I do radiation with means her incision has to be bigger. And she said, well, how big? And I said, I can't tell you, as big as I have to make it. I won't guarantee any. She said, you have to guarantee me. I said, I can't guarantee. I said, I can guarantee that you'll be happy. I'll do it all at one time and I'll try to hide most of your scar. So it took me a while. She had to go away and come back a couple of times just to get 
to the point where she could be calm about her decision. But we did it. And even though her incision was not this big, when she came back a week after surgery, she said, okay, you were right, it's okay. So the take home message today really is that breast cancer is curable and we can do more in a smaller amount of time with less treatment if we find it early. Yes, breast cancer is scary and yes, Everybody should have knowledge and education about what their disease is before they come in for treatment and can make that decision. And for all the women in the audience, get your mammograms. Thank you.